Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to another Bake Sale 2012 Let's Play video. Today we're going to be playing Barn Runner, the rich dame who cut the cheese. It is a very special Max game because it was made by Mr. Ponch, who also, to my understanding, started the whole AGS Bake Sale, so this is going to be awesome. And what makes this even more awesome is that Ponch is here with us. Say hello, Ponch. Hello. Anything you want to tell our viewers about Barn Runner before we get started? Barn Runner, the first Barn Runner game was made in 2003, so I've been making these for a long time. I probably should have come up with something more original for a bake sale game, but I guess I'm lazy and I wanted to stick with what I know. Right. We're going to turn off Naughty Bits because who doesn't want to see Naughty Bits? <laughs> And, uh, well, let's get started. So far, all I, I have never played a single Barn Runner game before, so I have no idea what to expect. But well, you're in for a treat. <laughs> from what I can tell, it contains a lot of boobs. Normally not this many. This game is, is pretty special. Uh, so not every game I make has such a great menu screen. Yeah, so far, four, four great boobs. Let's, see, let's hope there's a lot more. <laughs> we shall view the opening movie. Let's see what happens. Evans will 2181. Don't let the caption fool you. Here in the city of Evansville, it was March 16, 2181. But everywhere else in the world, it was January 15, 2192. Right. I'm not going to read all the text, but I'm not going to skip it too fast so people can actually read it if you want to. You That's what the pause button's for. Yep. And plus, I'm reading this myself, so I know what's going on. Okay. The trick was to try to sum up ten years' worth of Barn Runner backstory in just five or six text boxes, so that new people wouldn't be totally left out, but that it would still have something to offer people who'd been playing the game for a long time. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure you learned all about this stuff in history class. Of course I'm we sure did. I'm sure you did. Of course we did. Let the robots cover our shifts until Monday. Hell of a Friday. It's been a Friday that's lasted 11 years at this point. That music, by the way, is uh, by Bob Bunnell. And the menu music was by one of Mark uh, Lovegrove's friends, a guy named Simon Loveridge. But all the in-game music, once it starts, is by uh, James Spano's dual names. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to get Dual Names to do a Let's Play with me, too, but he's been having trouble as well. Oh, but, did, is he also unfamiliar with the Skypes and the interwebs like I am? He's more familiar t with it, but he says he doesn't have a headset, and when I told him that he should buy one, just like Ponch did, he was like, nah, I'm going to try using my phone as a microphone. He could just drop $20 on a cheap, cheap headset like I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he could, but apparently he's not willing. My god, uh, we're a serious-looking man. He's very... he's tired. With epic eyebrows. Yes. Prick Beckard. Yep. Head of the city's robot crime division. <sighs> another the day, robot, another dollar. Yeah. The robot in the elevator, by the way, is uh, FX-7 from Star Wars. Every robot in Barn Runner is taken from somewhere else. Okay. I shall make it a hobby to try r identifying them, although I'm pretty poor at identifying robots. Mm. Welcome to El Refugio del Rico. Are you here for the big fundraiser? The what? Also, I spotted more boobs. Yes, there they are. Again. Check your coat. This is also the first Barn Runner game that ever had the little uh, text box at the bottom that tells you what the mouse is hovering over. Ooh. So you're, yeah. le you're learning new stuff as well. Actually, in the default Barn Runner GUI I made way back when, it was always built in. I just always switch it off before the game starts. And this one I just decided to leave it in, maybe to help new people out a little bit. All right. Let's see what we have. My Gold Detective's badge. I'm permitted to carry lethal weaponry. Wristling communicator. 
Dick Tracy radio wristwatch thingy. I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> data link, useful for reading data disks and robot memory files. All-purpose multi-tool, a.k.a. the Swiss Army Knife. Indeed. Actually, it's a Leatherman pocket tool. I've got one of those actually right here in front of me. Right. I have never owned a Leatherman. I've got a Leatherman, I've got a Gerber, I've got a couple of Swiss Army Knives. I've got a fetish with multi-tools, actually. <laughs> Please don't tell us anymore. <laughs> we, we might not want to know all about this fetish. I have a drawer full of them. <laughs> <laughs> Energy of course, the gun. We always have Texan. to have a gun. Well, as a Texan, I have a drawer full of those, too. Uh, on that part, I am a little sad that I can't have that. Oh. <laughs> In Finland, it's illegal to have a gun. For the most part. Even a rifle? But, uh, the law basically... Nowadays, it's like nobody can really get a gun unless you've been in some kind of... Uh, group for a few years shooting air guns. Oh, wow. It's sad. I need a key card. Suck. Let us see. These lawyers aren't cheap. Fundraiser for mayor to champs. Legal bills today only. Please give dollars. <laughs> mayor to camp is a character I've wanted to put in a uh a lot more games than she's appeared in. I've written her into two or three other games, but for one reason or another, she always gets cut out early in the early in the writing procedure. Right. So it's nice to it's nice to actually have her in a game again. You at least have a writing procedure. I never do that. Oh, <laughs> well, the Barnrunner games because I knew I was going to be doing them for so long. I've always approached them as sort of like a long-running TV series, and so I write everything out in script form first, and then I try to figure out where to fit the puzzles in, <laughs> which is probably backwards, but that's how I've always done it. All right. He wants my coat. But you can't give him your coat, because I won't draw the character without one. I know that. All those sprites hand-drawn, by the way. They look hand-drawn as well. Yeah. I draw them on a copy paper and then scan them in. Serious? Little, yeah, seriously. Each little frame of that guy, he's about the size of my thumb. He's about an inch and a half tall or so. Wow. Yeah, I just draw a whole strip of them as you, the whole walk cycle, everything. Everything in Barn Runner's hand drawn. That is something I would call doing it the old fashioned way. I draw it on a drafting table with a T square. I'm starting to see why you are keep telling people that you are from nineteen ninety six. Yes, that's where I live. I ha I used to work in the underground comic industry a long time ago under various other names and uh <laughs> I've still got my T square, I've got my every all the ink is drawn with tech pens. Uh, repeatograph tech pens, all that stuff. It's all very old. It's very old school. Barn Runner's a very analog world. Okay. I started doing games. I did. I had like MS Paint, and then I, <laughs> I was clicking pixels with my mouse, doing first walk cycles. That, that's, uh, how, that's how Infection One was made. Good God. Now I have a tablet. I've got. Oh, is it a bamboo or something that somebody got me for Christmas a couple of years back? I, I still prefer to do it the old-fashioned way, though. I just like I like pen and paper. Yeah, I understand that. Running around playing hide and seek and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Although you can't tell from that outline, the robot in the window is actually is it Jedediah or Jedediah or something like that, a robot from the old British TV series The Tomorrow People. Right. I have never seen that. You have to be old to have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting worrisome information from this robot about Mayor Duchamp. Or Duchamp. Everything about it. Yeah, it's, it depends on how you pronounce it. The woman I based it on in, uh, in real life, that's how she pronounced her name, Duchamp. So. Right. I shall try to do the same, though. Although when I first read it, I immediately saw it as Duchamp. Yeah. I, it's a perfectly valid way to pronounce it, I think. I just... Almost everybody in Barn Runner, all the characters are based on people I've known in real life. Yeah. I do the same. Oh. Actually. Oh, excuse me. No worries. So far, this has been a much more, uh, let's say, much less weird Let's Play than Ram Ghost when Ghost and I were both <laughs> sick, <laughs> sneezing. Yeah, uh, you guys sounded terrible. <laughs> we were not uh, happy campers. But we had fun. <laughs> Well, the important thing is we're getting all of this recorded for, you know, for posterity. 
Yes, that is the idea of the bake sale let's play videos. So well. To ensure that everybody knows what these games were. Capture a specific moment in time, mine being from the 1990s. Yes, yes. He's a coat checkbot. No, he cannot check my coat. Let me ask you about something else. There's a lot of dialogue in this game, by the way. Yep, I've noticed. I'm hoping we Plus, get to do some puzzling soon. Oh, you will. There's just I've I've always wanted to try like a classic Who Done It, and so everybody you're going to meet in this restaurant, when you meet new people, you can go back and ask the people you've spoken to before about the person you just met. So the dialogue trees, you there's a lot of dialogue in this game. <laughs> I've always wanted I just always wanted to do like you know a classic you know a Columbo kind of story where everybody tells a slightly different story and everyone is lying to you. And you have to try to figure out who did it and why. I, I shall prepare my trusty pen and paper in that case to make notes. Good. <laughs> I actually I surprised Ben when we did Falling Skywards by actually having a piece of paper and scribbling notes. I needed a sheet of paper for that game as well. It was surprising, surprisingly. Um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not emo. Most most of Ben's games seem to have sort of an emo note. I thought the ending of that game, without giving any, giving anything away, uh, my girlfriend Kim said it was sort of have your cake and eat it too kind of ending. You know, I expected to be to make a really hard decision there at the end, but yeah, Ben kind of copped out a little bit. Uh, it's okay. I liked it. <laughs> it made me smile. Yeah, it was a good game. I was just I got to the end. I was expecting to have to make a, a tough decision. You know, yeah, and as you said, like Kim called it, "Have your cake and eat it too." Ending. A deadlock, a catch twenty-two. The robot is crying. Yes, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor robot. Something coat like. Yes, your most coat like object. Here's your first puzzle. Okie dokie. What is my most coat like object? Well, the only thing I actually wear probably would be the Daily Link. Eh, it's not anything like a coat. No, unfortunately. Darn. I have no idea which one of these might be closest thing to a coat. You want a hint, or just want to randomly try everything? <laughs> I'm probably going to be randomly trying everything. Okay. Well, fortunately, we don't have too many items yet. Yeah, that's why I put this puzzle early in the game. It originally appeared a little later. And by that time, I think the character may have had over a dozen items, and it's just, you know, everybody hated it. And a quick shout out to uh, Frodo, Hans Free, and Kay Conan. They were my playtesters for this game, who told me where all the puzzles sucked and right. how they needed <laughs> how they needed to be moved around. <laughs> right. So the idea was that it has to be have as many same letters as possible. Coat, note. Plus, they're, phonetically, they sound the same. Yeah. Okay. I see your point. I was looking at it from the angle of what what is, what what can I wear? Yeah. Of course, the only thing he wears is the wrist link, and that doesn't work. It was just one of those no reason screams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried what just happened. <laughs> I certainly wasn't reading your note, if that's what you were thinking. Oh, no. We're not leaving the gun. You're going to have to. Oh, no. No, yes. I'll rather shoot him. Can't shoot him through the glass. That glass is...
Way thick. <laughs> Bam. No guns. <laughs> Raiden and Cray. <laughs> That's a very uh, quick thinking robot, I would say. You have to be in that robot's line of work. <laughs> More will be revealed as the game goes on, of course. I want to shoot the. Damn it. I'm having a worried feeling that this robot's going to turn against me, or... It would be too obvious now that I think of it, but it still seems likely the robot did it. Yeah. Detective Peckard, Robot Crimes Division. And that's Pierre Plate de Jour, the uh, maitre d' for the restaurant. Right. The roll's eyes. The mayor is with her also. Stud muffin. <laughs> 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 right. I'll just follow the alcohol fumes. <laughs> Please remove yourself of my presence. Hey, it's C3PO. Indeed it is. More boobies. Indeed. Originally, all the characters were going to have talking portraits or close-ups when you spoke to them, and this pic the menu picture of Aurora and the mayor standing side by side was the speaking portrait for the scene right here. But as the deadline loomed, I wasn't able to finish them all in time, and so I had to abandon. I had like five of them done. I had to abandon the rest. I, I reused this one as the uh, as the menu shot. Yeah. Well, at least you finished the game. I'm still a little That's guilty right. about mine. Well, don't feel bad. Snake, a lot of people dropped out. That's why I'm kind of glad we recruited as many junior bakers as we did, because it seemed like about half the people that volunteered just weren't able to make the deadline in time. Yeah. I know that um, Igor Hardy and Dual Names were working on a set of companion games. Retina was one half, and I forget what the other one was called. And Askevel Igor wasn't able to finish his, and so now Dual Names just sort of released a standalone game. I'm curious to see what the uh, the other game would have been. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I'm also curious about... I've seen pictures and a little explanation about Dual Names' this game, but I haven't been playing it because I want to do a Let's Play. But Dual Names I, is being slow. Yeah, I was one of the beta testers on that. That's probably the most unique game in the entire Bake Sale bundle. I've never played a psychological prison simulator before. <laughs> that was It was depressing. It's a very depressing game. He did a great job with it. Yeah. Dual names, if you are watching this, get your microphone in order. <laughs> they have them cheap on Amazon. That's where I got mine. Exactly. Wonderful. Thank you. I have to admit, I kind of missed some of the discussion because we were talking, but oh well. I'll survive. And if I do get stuck, I can always ask you. Well, what you're trying to do is the mayor... You can try to talk to the mayor again, but she's sort of incoherent because she's drunk. And so you need to find a way to sober her up. That's That was the setup for the first puzzle. We sort of talked our way through that. Sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. Th this is why you are here, so we can have some kind of discussion and commentaries. I've always wanted to do a director's commentary for a game. This is actually quite a, turning out to be more fun than I thought it would be. I didn't know if I'd have anything to say. Hold on. I'm going to have a look around here. See if there's some kind of items and stuff I can pick up. And more robot cameos. Yes, uh, that one I think is... And Frodo, by the way. That's Frodo there in the green dress. Who? Frodo from the forums. Oh. She's my senior playtester, and this is... I told her I'd put her in a game one day, and that's Janice, the, ah. uh, lounge, the lounge singer. Her real name is Jan, and there she is. Frodo's in a game. Awesome. Of, yep. of these robots, I cannot identify these two ones, the guitar and the bass bot, but I'm pretty sure... This robot at least looks really familiar. I'm trying to get the name of the movie in my name right now. Is it Judge Dredd? Yes, that's Hammerstein from 2000 AD Comics. The blue robot with the stand-up bass is Tom from the old uh, Cartoon Network programming block called Toonami. Yeah. And the robot with the red keytar is Kane from RoboCop 2. 
I have, well, okay. I've never seen RoboCop, RoboCop 2, so this is why. You're I'm not missing know. anything. You're not <laughs> missing anything with RoboCop 2. It blows. Which is, is surprising. It was directed by the same guy that did The Empire Strikes Back, so I don't know how it went so wrong. Okay. Uh, have you seen anything suspicious today? Classic start. The thing they do is suspicious. It's intriguing. Or at the worst, That's right. provocative. That's right. Suspicious is for the little people. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, have you seen the missing cheese? She was a teensy bit hungover. Right. The mayor's usually hungover. <laughs> Pretty much how she spends her days. This looping room, by the way, uh, I've got to give a, a quick hi to Zax for fixing that for me. The, the viewport, I could never quite get it to work properly. and It would have little skips sometimes. If you, if you stopped and restarted the walk cycle in just the right spot, it would screw the whole thing up. He fixed it in like two minutes. It made me so sad. <laughs> I I'd, I'd I'd debugged that damn thing for a weekend, and I was just off by two pixels or something one way or the other. And he fixed it right away. It makes me sad. Oh, I know the feeling. I'm not much of a programmer. No. Nah. There are no signs of struggle on the cheese holder. Nope. Well, it's priceless cheese, so anyone who steals it would want to make sure it was taken care of. You wouldn't want to mar or otherwise disfigure, you know, billion-dollar cheese. <laughs> Well, because in the future world of Barn Runner, uh, following the last Great War, all the cows have gone extinct, so far as anybody knows. So, real moo cow cheese is, you know, there's only so many wheels left of it in the world. I see. Okay, let's start going. I noticed there were a couple of different rooms I can go to, so let's go take a look. Yep. Actually, I'm thinking I could probably hold on to controls. I could up the game speed a little bit. Yeah, you can crank the walk cycle as fast as you want it to go. To the office elevator. Storage room. Data terminal. Manager's office. And remember, Bond Runner takes place in the far distant future as envisioned in the 1980s. So the internet doesn't exist. It's still things like bulletin board systems and that sort of thing. Okay. All the... All the media is still on floppy disks or giant disks, that kind of thing. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I, I have a soft spot for movies made back then. I was watching Wrath of Khan not too long ago, where they, the Klingon woman steals the Genesis tapes, that, and it's like a it's like a giant Atari cartridge, and that's how they're storing the plans. I love that kind of stuff. Seen anything suspicious? Uh... Gary Minch is he's probably the creepiest character in the whole game. I've always wanted to put him... He's another character like the mayor I want to put in more games, but it's always kind of a hard hard way to justify him being in a story because by the very position he holds, he wouldn't have much to do with the main character. All right. Now I'm starting to see what you mentioned about the huge dialogue trees. Oh, yeah. oh this is nothing. <laughs> You've still got a lot more characters. <laughs> oh, God. The important thing, the, what you need to do now is find a way to sober the mayor up. That's the first real puzzle. Let's let's get back to doing that then. Yeah. And talk to this guy more later. To the bar. There you go. And there's another robot. Which I cannot identify. You would have to remember an old 1980s uh, cop show called Riptide. There was a, a geeky robot, roboticist, whatever you call that, on that show. And he built his own robot called the Robaz. And that's that robot. Ah, okay. But that's only for people that were alive in 1984 and watching television. Did you do the mirror by having basically a second character behind? Is it that obvious? Behind? Yes. Yes. I, I wanted to do something better. I wanted a better mirror effect, but the, when the time came in the game to do the two bathrooms and the mirrors, the AGS forms were down, shockingly. <laughs> and so I, I was forced to write my own code <laughs> from scratch, and that's the end result. I'm, I'm pleased with it, considering I'm not really much of a programmer. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I, I have wanted to do a mirror in my games a lot of times, but I'm always afraid I'm going to screw it up when coding it, so I have never, ever done it. 
Also, do notice that the first thing I ever did when walking into the bar was walking to the ladies' bathroom. Yes, that's kind of creepy. Shame on you. Oops. Sorry, people. Uh, ah! Ah! I accidentally no, I clicked on something. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's not a bad mirror code for what it is, but I, I know there are better modules and stuff out there, but having written it, I sort of committed myself to using it because it's my, it's my code, damn it, and I wrote it. Damn it, Aurora, you can't come in here. What? That's a little worrisome. Well, you know. <laughs> Again, also notice the uh, the punk haircut. This is very 1980s future. Yes, indeed. What's your business here today? He's a dishwasher. <laughs> He's supposed to wash the dishes, but he won't. If he can no, help he, it. he 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 hides in here as much as he can to get away from Aurora. He <laughs> tries to stay on break the entire shift if he can. <laughs> oh God. No, no one in the city of Evansville wants to work very hard. Well, who does? Uh. I gave it to the chef bon and old bloody da. He's also. I just realized he's called Stu. Yes. I'm making clever observations. Lightly salted styrofoam packing peanuts. Also, I have to admit, for a puzzle about making a person sober, I have no idea how, because I have never been drunk. Oh. Well, the best remedy is usually black coffee. That's what I prefer. Right. Let's see if we can get so some. If you, if you, well, if you need to order something, you're at the right place. Yes. I need to inspect the kitchen. The kitchen is off limits. And a shirt like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not. Oh, I see. We you never finished talking to the mayor. That's why. We need to go back and talk to the mayor real fast. I will Just try it. to talk to her. I will do so in a second. I did talk to her twice, I think. I'm going to show her. I think you. My okay, badge. I think you clicked on the door the second time. Darn. Oh well, let's go. It is a good thing I have you here with me, otherwise I would probably be stumbling around. Well, on the barnrunner.com website, there's a walkthrough. I posted a walkthrough for the game, I think, the, the day it, it, the Big Sale went live. Okay. I usually try to get those out as fast as I can. Mayor Duchamp. Duchamp. She's too drunk to talk. I'll just sober up Yeah, first. okay. That was it. That was the bit we missed. That was a trigger. Yep. Actually, if you go to if you go the other direction, you'll get to the bar faster. Ah. I didn't keep track of how many doors I walked past. <laughs> I walked this looping room so damn many times trying to fix the viewport that I know where everything is. Now I, I'm making my Max game. You you would not believe how many times I have watched the days of June 1920. <laughs> I mean 2020 go by slowly. For a lot of people at the AGS community that just play the games and don't make them, I don't, I don't think they realize how tedious some aspects of making games can be. It is incredibly tedious. Let me ask you about something else. There you go. There. What do you have that's good for hangovers? Good old flash and back co black coffee. Yep. Here you go. So now we have coffee. Now you can take that to the mayor. It's you also in a blue cup. cup. Of course it is. <laughs> it wouldn't be in anything else. Originally the cup was purple to match the purple theme of the bar, and Aurora, she, she owns the restaurant, her favorite color is purple. Uh, but then last minute I changed it to blue because, well, you know. Ah, uh, of course. Uh, the gear. Use cup. Done. Mayor. This will help you sober up. Don't you dare. Stay back. I won't <laughs> let you do it. <laughs> she's afraid of being sober. She's been drunk for so long, she's always feared that becoming sober might kill her. 
Just the, the <laughs> sheer number, the cumulative amount of hangover might just do her in. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, fine. Give me the damn coffee. Piping hot from my coat pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years worth of hangover all gone at once. Are you alright? <laughs> oh, God. There we go, all sobered up. So that's how it happens. Yep, just like real life. Yeah. That's exactly how it works, kids, so don't be afraid to get drunk. This That is a horrible lesson we are teaching people <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, you better add another couple of Ds. Technically a G cup, or so Kim assures me. Ah, I see. Let's see. Let's just go through all the options for now. So the cheese, you must get it back. It's priceless and it's my campaign that's insured it. How am I supposed to get re-elected if I can't afford lots of commercials to viciously... Darn, I need to slow down the text. I can't keep up. What about the lesbians? <laughs> 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 that is the, possibly the best thing you can hear when having a discussion. What about the lesbians? <laughs> I'm going to slow the text down to a crawl. I can manually skip it when required. Anything of the other people What's here? It? That's what the sliders are there for. Yes. Actually, while playing this, I'm starting to realize I should probably add some sliders of my own to my games. I love sliders. I. I the first few Barn Runner games don't have them, and I really, if I ever do like a George Lucas thing where I go back and tweak all my games, I'm going to put sliders in everything. <laughs> my option menus usually consist of save, load, and quit. That's what everybody's consist of, and I don't, I don't know why people don't do sliders, man. They're not, they're not that hard to do, you know? True. Uh, let's, just, let's talk about Stu. <laughs> Who the hell is Stu? <laughs> Never mind. He seemed yeah, like the most important the, person to talk about. She wouldn't associate with anyone who was a dishwasher, so she has no idea who he is. Of course not. What about the coat check bot? Of course not. It's still too low. Yeah. Oh, I sense a secret. Everybody in this game has a secret. If if you were to do this, and I don't recommend you do, but if you play the game with the director's cut on and ask everybody about everything, no two people's stories match up, even if they're at the same table together. My God. It was a lot of dialogue. It was I had to have a flow chart just to keep track of all of it. <laughs> well, because as you meet new people, now you can go back and ask them about things, and some things they'll tell you about the person you just asked about, you can go back and ask that, per that other person about what they just told you. Lots and lots and lots of dialogue in this game. There is. Yeah. How long do you think this game roughly will take us to play through, by the way? If you if you insist on asking everyone about everybody there, we'll be here a long time. Right. In that case, <laughs> for, for the sanity of our viewers, I'm probably going to ask you to give me some hints in a few that's, moments. Sure, that's the best way. Otherwise, this will be a five-hour video. Yeah, and I, I don't have quite that time. I don't know how long Kim's going to be gone, but at a certain point, she's going to she's going to come home, and then, you know, I can't sit back here and talk to people in Finland about video games. <laughs> Never the mind. Where should we start an investigation so far, except by okay. talking to her? Well, at the at this point, which, just giving you a, a sort of a beneath-the-hood appearance, there's a trigger you have to set. If you've already gone around, assuming you were playing the game fully, you've gone around and spoken to everybody at this point, and it's leading you nowhere. And so all you can do is start going to the places where the people aren't to see if you can find any sort of clue or anything. So the trick is to the room that had the data link and all the, the data terminal on the wall, the office elevators and all that stuff. Yep. It's where you want to go because that'll trigger the next big movement in the game. All right. Because everybody else you're speaking to here just keeps telling you lies or telling you their version of the events, and it'll get you nowhere. You can spend an hour talking to everyone and exhausting the dialogue options, and it won't accomplish anything. Just like real police work. <laughs> Depressing. I want to talk. To, yeah. I want to talk to this guy quickly. Right. Yep. 
the robots all have their own personalities, but they'll always focus you back towards uh, Janice, the singer. Ah. Okay, let's go to the... Which, although the game doesn't state it... Oh, here we go. Goodness! Spaceballs. Yes, actually. That's Dot Matrix and Spaceballs, and the robot coming up behind him is the green, or the gray GUA robot from the TV series Andromeda. And she just bumped into him, and although you don't know it at the time, she's just picked your pocket. God damn it. <laughs> Stop right there, both of you. What is going on here? The plot that... Who's similar to, though legal, legally distinct to all the other pimp bots. Important statement of fair use so I don't get sued by NPC Universal. Because I think they own the rights to this guy. Oh, God. For the robot that he is similar yet legally distinct to. Sing for pimp, sing for the fuzz. Yes, this is Pimpbot9000, who's appeared in other Barn Runner games, and is uh, obviously based on Pimpbot5000 from the TV series uh, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Right. Which I'm sure in Finland you would know all about that. Actually, no. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> of all the supporting robot characters, Pimpbot is probably my favorite. He's another character that I wish I could find ways to work him in more games. Well, it's just a lot of fun to write dialogue for. Polluted action six hot scoop and I was tip line bullying board. Next time you're down in a bot town, swing by my crib. And he's dropped something. Yes he has. It's a giant five inch what five and a half inch floppy disk. A media link disc. Yes, because it's a giant disc, that's what you store movies and stuff on in the world of Barn Runner. Yes. But his data link, if it weren't broken, could only accept the little hard, you know, three and a quarter inch floppy disks. So it wouldn't be able to play it. Ah. But it's broken because it's actually the, the data link is broken to solve a puzzle at the end of Barn Runner 4, which this game takes place immediately after. So he hasn't bothered to buy himself a new one yet. Ah. Modem sounds. <laughs> you should have downloaded the sound effect from some some site on the internet and had those play real really. I thought about doing that actually, but the Barn Runner games always play out like a silent movie. There's just there's just MIDI tunes and never any sound effects. And the only reason Barn Runner games are silent actually is because when I made the first one, I couldn't find a suitable sound effect for his uh, his ray gun, the Spapa. Someone has sent, sent me, uh, sent me a, a great sound for it. But by then, the Barn Runner games have been silent for three years, so I've just stuck with that motif. Yeah. Don't make too big changes. Nah. Too lazy. I'd have to come up with door sounds and everything else now, and that's just complicated. Darn! Now they're, they're, the robots are hiding in the storage room, and there's no way into them. Not yet. But whatever was on that disc, you uploaded to the news. So, again, another important key point of the plot that doesn't really make any sense just yet. This is the kind, it's a, you know, a Kurosawa sort of plot that only makes sense in reverse. Ah. Not that I'm comparing myself to Kurosawa. <laughs> he can tell a coherent story. I mostly just draw boobies. <laughs> uh, speaking Have of which... Calling. Right. Let's see. Hold on. There we go. Well, now you got to find Pimpbot. You saw he he entered the restaurant. He's somewhere in the restaurant. The two uh, girl robots are hiding in the closet. So what became a Pimpbot? He will be found. I'm guessing he went to the bar. Do robots go to the bathroom? Oh, hello. Nope, but apparently Gary Minge is now hiding in the men's room. My god. 
And Stu is gone. Some big sexy company. <laughs> yeah, Gary Minch, behind closed doors, is a very creepy man. <laughs> he's, he's completely disdainful of the hero in public, but behind closed doors, baby. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is I'm I think this is the second or third bake sale game where I'm being sexually harassed in an uncomfortable way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gets worse. Oh God! You promise to keep your pants on? What the entire time? <laughs> <laughs> you drive a hard bargain. Oh God! <laughs> so, so he needs a phone. Right. We shall have to find him a phone then. You've already got one. Do I? Your little Dick Tracy wrist link, wrist link radio thingy. Well, darn. As a quick bit of trivia, the wrist link appears in every Barn Runner game in the inventory, and this is the first game that you've ever actually used it for anything. <laughs> the, the running well, gag no longer a gag. Yeah, I just I like games that have useless inventory. I think one of the, one of the Larry Vale's one or two, he had a badge or a gun or something. You never used it for anything. And I remember running around that game just trying to use it on something to find a use for it. I already I always clean up items. If I realize something's not used, I just clean it out. I probably shouldn't. No, I, you know it, it depends. If you can find funny responses for it, you know, down through the years I've tried to find funny things to do with the wrist link, but it's never actually solved any puzzles until now. All right. Some great room service. He's a creepy man. He is a creepy, creepy man. And he's calling the bar. The plug smug plum smuggler, the leg spreader, sex in the bathroom stall. <laughs> All real <laughs> drinks. Oh God. <laughs> That is troubling. <laughs> yes, it is. As a lazy man myself, that was pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> so it's all an elaborate ruse to distract you. Darn. Stairs daggers. <laughs> Oh well, let's go get it. And there it is. I'm not thinking anything, buddy. He oh God. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody thinks we are having yes. gay sex. In yes, indeed. It's like a plum smuggler, but more bigger and aptly. You're a little bigger than Gary's usual companion. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, this is high society. This whole game is sort of my commentary on high society. Right. Gary's got a friend who's willing and eager today. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I think I took the drink. Yes, I did. Yes. Let's let's get inside and get this over with. <laughs> sparrow has landed. I repeat, the sparrow has landed. <laughs> what was what? Let's hand the man his drink. This is the moment in the game where I'm looking at my inventory, thinking, yeah. is there anything I can mix in the drink? Nope. Unfortunately. I might have wanted to. Well, you know, here's your chance virtually at least to get a guy drunk in a men's room. I'm not sure that's something I want to do, especially, <laughs> this, not, not, especially not this guy. The idea being that most of my players are guys, so I was hoping this scene would make them a little uncomfortable. <laughs> but then you have other people who, like Tabitha or, and Kat, who are playing this and go like, ooh. Or Frodo. Or Frodo. <laughs> Wink, wink. Oh, that reminds me of the Ben Chandler game. Wink, Which one? wink. Oh, yeah, uh, Paranormal Investigator. Yes. That was the great thing about that Let's Play, though, is now I know who that photo is on the wall. I 
went crazy trying to figure out who that person was. I couldn't Google the image. I could not figure out who that was because I'm not a real Australian, apparently. <laughs> Neither was I, but unfortunately I had someone to tell me. Indeed. I, I also still can't get the damn song out of my head. Yes. I, I, did you notice in the Let's Play I made, I had to speed up the song and put it at the end credits. Slightly sped up, because it sounds oh, a what? lot sillier. Oh, <laughs> I just didn't notice that. That was probably one of my favorite games in the Big Cell, actually. Just really on the strength of that opening song, man. And yeah. the, the conversation with the bunyip at the end was, was pretty funny. The whole, the whole game, game was funny. I was sad you didn't find the secret character, though. I will be going back to it once I get all the Bake Sale games actually recorded for the internet. I found him somehow. I don't know how I triggered him, but I, he's found back at the rocks by Ben's uh, stately Ben Chandler Manor, whatever you would call it. I asked, I asked Brundislav if those rocks had anything, or any activity into them. He said no. Well, I guess... The rocks themselves don't, but that's where the secret character spawns. It's just a, it's a guy that follows Ben around and comments on stuff. Oh. Uh, darn. Actually, one of the people that was supposed to be in the bake sale, but he never finished his game. So, But now he gets to live on as, a, as an Easter egg character. Right. Back to exploring. So he's kept your wrist link. He has apparently been contacting someone on the phone, setting up something. So again, things are moving behind the scenes that uh, Prick is not aware of. Exactly. Fortunately, no silly comments from him. No. I was worried I would get some kind of little cheer when I came out of the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, well, but this where is getting was, interesting. Well, where he was standing, he couldn't see the legs, though, so he doesn't know anyone's in there. Of course not. Why can't we still try opening stuff? Darn. You're not, you're not gonna use the bathroom stall. Plus, it's a lady's room. That would be inappropriate. He shouldn't even be in there. Shame on you. <laughs> Let's see. But there are a couple little eggs like that. Ah, uh, here we are. C-3PO's back. New people also. Yep, that's the chief who is in every Barn Runner game, and the girl in white is Noriko, who's been with the series since Barn Runner 2. Prick is hopelessly in love with both of them, and doesn't realize he has no chance. Yes, I, I can understand why he's in love. Both have wonderful boobs. <laughs> this actually, uh, another good thing about this game was I had a chance to draw them in something other than their normal uniforms or normal outfits, you know. And the, the talking portrait of the two of them was fantastic. I almost used it as the menu. We can add it as a secret hidden, <laughs> hidden stuff in the Let's Play. I can put it hidden behind the credits so if people are still watching and listening to everything... I'll probably. If, I know Ghost is planning on doing a deluxe version of Ram Ghost when uh, a year has gone by. I'll probably do a deluxe version of this game too and put all the talking portraits back in. The only ones that were left were the people I didn't want to draw, like Gary Minge, uh, Huffman, and uh, Nugget Natenki. I think there was only there was like the four I hadn't done. Yeah. I'd done Pepbot and everybody else. I, I drew everybody that was sexy, and then I was left with everybody that wasn't. And so and Stu, I didn't have one for Stu either. So there you go. Those were the five I needed to draw. <laughs> I just ran out of time because I drew the boobies first. Yes, boobies are compelling. Yes, that's how I roll. Oh my god, you look hot. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant to say was, hello, Doc. Damn it, prick focus. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much hotness all at once. My man shields are down to 15%. <laughs> <laughs> what about the missing mayor? Aha! The plot thickens yet again. Aha. Uh -huh. I have an idea where she might be. Uh, you have an idea, but Prick doesn't. Of course not. Well, it should be obvious in a place like this. A woman has gone missing. Where to search first? Ladies' room. But again, we both know he's not going to open that bathroom stall. Because it'll it. be inappropriate. No, so wouldn't. she's... Well, what do we know? We know that she's hiding in the bathroom stall. And also because she uh, her shoes were red. She's the only person in the game that's wearing red. That was the kind of the giveaway there. So yes. why is she hiding in the bathroom stall? And there's Pimpbot at the table where Gary Minge was earlier. 
Hello, Pimp Apparently, Pot. And Gary left in a hurry because he left his drink. He can't be seen talking to a cop. And Gary Minge doesn't want to be seen by Pimpbot. So there's, it's a Rashomon kind of thing. Everyone's got their own secret story. And there's Aurora again. Yes, what was on the screen, by the way? Something, I she did something. If you had the director's commentary enabled and the naughty bits enabled, you can see what she was looking at. But that's a whole subplot that gets gets excised if the director's cut is on. Right. And there went C-3PO again with, the, with its, a large human-sized box, oddly enough. <laughs> And if you, although you can't, you can't really see it from here because the walk, the looping room is a giant circular room. That he was going from left to right means that when you go back to the other screen, the direction would be from right to left. And so he was Just going to the bar. It towards the bar area. Yes. I can't go from here. Darn. Nope. Well, because otherwise I was going to have to draw an interior set of looping rooms, and there wasn't anything to see on the inside except the manager's office and the bar. Yeah. It would have been just a long scrolling green screen. So I just accidentally found the I I can't just go around grabbing rich women. Oh, don't be shy. Live a little. <laughs> she really really wants him, but you know, he's on the job. Yes. Police Plus, business. Also, yes, he's also in love with Holly and Noriko, so you know, there's only he only has so much love to go around. There is and, so much potential for stuff to happen in these games. Oh, yes. He's also got to find a way to, that pimp My God. Yes. I'm that not is, even going to start guessing where this robot's from. That is from an art book I have when I lived uh, in Japan years ago. That's from, uh, what was his name? Hajime Soriyama. Did the sexy robot thing back in the 80s. He made a lot of money with that design. My God. Yeah. The only thing was that I had to make that robot's boobs a lot larger than he normally draws them. For reasons that will become clear later. And another media link disc on the floor. What could be on that one? It has the world's girl on girl <laughs> written on it. <laughs> Which is quite an exciting clue. It's almost as though someone tailored that clue specifically for him. I can't grow up a fan. I'm already in the ladies' room. Why add my shame? Exactly. Also, I found a bug. Where? When you talked... No, wait, wrong. Well, not a bug for, per se, but I found an issue with the mirror code. Because right as I was talking a second earlier, the character turned around, but the mirror image didn't. Ah! Ha-ha! <laughs> well, hey, I wrote it, I, like I said, I wrote this code myself. It's, it's shamefully, poorly written. I should be ashamed of myself, is my point. But it works. And there goes Aurora in the background. My god, there's so much going on in this game. If you want, I'll tell there's a, an Easter egg that nobody found until I told them how to find it. When we after we take the media link disc to the data terminal on the wall, uh, I'll tell you which direction to go next. Because I want somebody to see this because nobody <laughs> ever finds it. Okay. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I need to go work my magic. Nice to you, by the way. I can't do that voice. I I do it. It's a well, it's a British accent. I've always been practicing my British. I want I, to I be can't. so incredibly English. Apparently. I can't do a British accent. I can do like a bad Cockney accent, which also allows me to do a really bad Australian accent. <laughs> and that one's closed as well, oddly enough. No toilet humor for us, I see. Well, because there's something going on in there. Something that will become clear later. Thinking of who was there when we last saw the place, I'm not sure I want to know. Yep. The trick is, if you remember, Stu was hiding in the men's room. Yeah, look at all that alcohol. She drank that in between the time you first spoke to her and the time she went missing. <laughs> Wherever the mayor goes, she always leaves empty booze bottles. But I say, if, if you recall, Stu hides in the bathroom if Aurora's on the prowl so that she can't make him work. So if she was back in the kitchen, Stu has to be hiding somewhere. Yes. Let's see what the disc has for us. This thing is up so uploading itself too. Oh dear. I'm worried about what it's going to send. <laughs> you have reached the government auditing department of Arcology 19. Please state your name. 
Oh, don't say your real name. Now I'm worried. Yep. For submitting the following file. Corrected mayoral exp expense account fiscal report. She'll be in a shoot bond mayor to camp until our auditors come in on Monday morning. We thank and you. Monday never comes. Oh dear. We thank you, Prick Packard, for performing this investigation on behalf of the Advisory Council. You, Prick Packard, assumed all legal liability for any errors, <laughs> accidental or deliberate, that may be found in this report. Wait, what? Also, wait, what is my standard response to everything wrong in games? <laughs> Risk imprisonment on behalf of your mayor, if only all citizens were as civic-minded as... Oh, dear. Yeah. If you're not entirely sure what you're doing, never, ever give your real name. Click buzz. I'm pretty sure what just happened was that we're screwed. And there wasn't any girl-on-girl -girl porn on it, either. Damn you! I was expecting no. that. I know. There, have been, there has been so much potential for boobs in this game so already. He fell into a cunning plan. A very <sighs> cunningly laid trap. I'm not sure he fell. I did. <laughs> <laughs> did you have something about the Easter egg at this point? Uh, yes. Go back the. Go back to the. Yes, that direction. The direction you're going now. And go towards. Go to the elevator where the coat check bot is. Aurora was in the kitchen earlier. My God, the door was just open. Just yep. for a minute or two, I was... Uh, and, and Aurora was in there. So Aurora is, is moving behind the scenes again. Yes. Making things happen. Things are happening for reasons or something. <laughs> it's, it's a real... It's a thriller. It's a white-knuckle thriller. Let's see if we can talk him into getting the door open. I doubt it. No, there's no. You can't open that door yet. You can open the door later, but not yet at this time. Let's do a quick question about Aurora. Program to say only nice things about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm thinking she has a nice hat. She has, certainly has a big round. <laughs> I see what you did there. Indeed. I'm clever that way. Right. No further booze bottles have appeared. Nope. At that the table. hiding somewhere. Also, I have never talked to this guy before. He that would is like nugget. to get lost. Yes. <laughs> That's Nugget Notenki, although he prefers to be called Nice Guy Notenki. Which is an incredibly bad and obscure uh, in joke for anyone that was ever a fan of Gynax in the early days. That of uh, when they were doing uh, the General Products catalog, they used to sell these videos about this fat office worker who traveled around as a superhero, solving people's problems on a moped that had an oscillating fan on the back of it. And his his name was Nice Guy Notenki. It's one of the strangest videos I own. Oh God. Yes, yeah, very old joke. I don't know if anyone will get that. Now they do. Yes, now they do. <laughs> someone's, on, someone's creating a Wikipedia page as we speak because it did not exist when I made this game. I wonder if I'm like one of five people on Earth that remembers Nice Guy No Tenki. <laughs> uh, oops. Ah! Almost skipped a lot of lot of stuff. Uh... <laughs> Story did not go where I expected it to go. No. Then he left my brother for our aunt. That's enough, really. And she made the mistake of introducing him to our elderly grandfather. <laughs> oh yes. Oh God. So Gary Minch is a wonderful character. I wish I could put him in more games. Oh, God. Right. We have now been recording for about an hour, but also wow. as a 
Side note. Hey, buddy. Come here a minute. Pim bought 9,000 bought a drink for Aurora to help her through this stressful time. And he asked me to ask you to take it to her for him. Again, Prick is being maneuvered by people, you know, people are pulling his strings. Yes. We are but pawns in a game. And remember, lift your legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh no, the bathroom's still closed. Well, where have we last seen Aurora? Well, you gotta find her now. And Pimpbot is gone. Yes. Hello. There she is. I don't see how this could go wrong. <laughs> I hope it's big. <laughs> Pretty big, yeah. <laughs> see, it is very big. It has two straws. We could share this drink and talk. I'm a man who loves a free lunch. Or <laughs> until my boss leaves. <laughs> we're gonna uh. we're gonna appear busy and good workers until the boss is gone. Yes. Most barn runner games begin with him taking a nap at work. <laughs> he is possibly the laziest cop in the city. Reminds me of Roger Wilco. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I think that rich lady was coming on to me. Well, it's a good thing we know better. Indeed. Otherwise, we could have had some kind of confusion going on in here. Yeah. He might have actually gotten laid for a change. Poor fellow. Come here a minute, you turkey leg. <sighs> and there's the robot. Yes. So she was in the bathroom, and Prick, uh, Pimpbot was missing for a while, and now they're both back at the table. And there's an empty bottle of wine there on the table. It yes. wasn't there. All clues. Clues pointing to something. <laughs> you also mentioned you had to draw the robot's boobs bigger than usual. Yes, again, clues. Yes. I'm starting to see a pattern emerging. But now you can finally talk to Pimpbot. The girl with the big ass. <laughs> <laughs> Important notes, dear sir. My pimp sense is tingling. <laughs> Oh, God. A clue! Yes. I already have a good idea of what these clues are pointing at. I just need to find a way, find a way to capitalize on these clues. Councilman Minch avoiding you. Pool owes me money. I only got the one service to charge for. <laughs> <laughs> I have a huge collection of black exploitation DVDs from the 70s, old Pam Greer movies, Shaft, and that kind of stuff. I love watching those because it gives me an excuse to write Pimpbot dialogue. <laughs> I grew up watching those, man. Some of my earliest movie, my memories are. My dad had a bunch of those, so. Margu, I mean Maria Bella. She's Italian. 
all of her Italian is, is it's genuine Italian, but she's not actually answering any of the questions you ask her. All of her responses are inappropriate. They're just uh, responses you would get out of, out of a stock, you know, phrase book for an Italian tourist, or for a tourist to Italy, I should say. <laughs> okay. Does she speak any English? Hell no, man. All she says are things like, which way to the bus stop, and how much do these shoes cost, and that sort of thing. <laughs> or at least I assume she does. I speak no Italian whatsoever. I just checked a book out at the library and <laughs> used it. <laughs> I'm going to, after I do this video, I'm going to go back and watch it and go to, to something with Babelfish or Google Translate. Yeah. I'm going to check everything she says. Well, I, I kind of already know, but I have to ask what his business here today is. <laughs> Force a habit. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a free piece of advice. Don't ever end up owing a woman a favor, prick. Yeah, clues. Yes. Well, we know she was in the bathroom and he was gone for a while. So perhaps there is something to be found in the ladies' room. Which is now accessible. Oddly enough. Just, it just so happens. Just so happens. Suspender belt, as they call it in um, Europe, I think. Or maybe Australia, I'm not sure. Loot women's clothing. Pick up everything. <laughs> Take it home with you. Hide it well. Electronic lock release. Aha! Uh -huh. Hello? One lock passcode programmed in here. I wonder which lock door it opens. We shall be trying it out soon. Indeed. Also, a bra! Examine bra. Of impressive proportions. I don't have to wonder who these belong to. <laughs> okay. Come on, there has to be some kind of cool response for picking these up. <laughs> the bra warrants closer inspection. <laughs> it's all very clear to me now. No doubt about it. This bra belongs to a woman who wears a G cup. Which, until this very moment, I did not seriously believe existed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I never dared to get my hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> I see this man is a friend of large memories. Indeed. Well, he's divorced. He's been divorced for a long time, and I don't think he's had sex at all in about six years. <laughs> so, he's a, he's a sexually frustrated character. He's fun to write dialogue for when it comes <laughs> to this sort of thing. You need to one day make it so that at the end of a game he gets laid. That is where the series is heading, yeah. It, has, it has to happen sooner or later. It will happen before the series ends, yeah. Or he will end up exploding. <laughs> It's actually based loosely on a friend of mine who was got divorced, and he didn't get laid for like two years, and it does make you stranger, as it turns out, you know? He finally met a nice girl and got remarried and all was well, but it, it has an impact, has an effect on a man, apparently. I can only imagine. <laughs> now then, where did we have locked doors? Well, there are three. There's yes. the, the door by the coat checkbot, and the, the doors on either side of the data terminal where you gave Roar the uh, big glass of tea. We're going to be trying the lobby one first. Before, actually, as quick, just to save a little time, before you go in there, uh, go back to the ma to the uh, the maitre d and get a menu. It'll save some it'll save some backtracking. Right. I won't say why you need a menu to talk to the robot. Only that you'll be glad you had one. Let's talk about something else. Could I get a menu? Very well, although why you would want one is beyond my powers of comprehension. Hey, you are. For some reason, I gave him a weird British accent. Uh, <laughs> I give everyone a weird British accent. He actually has a, if you could hear him, he has a very thick, fake French accent. Pardon, I was merely demeaning you. With yep. my fictionalized interpretation of your sorry excuse for a life. Exactly, just like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's not actually French in a, in a dropped subplot. Again, I think you have to have all the all the switches for director's cut and everything on. There's a subplot you can uncover where it turns out he's not actually French at all. He's from uh, Teaneck, New Jersey, and he's pretending to be French so she would hire him because everyone in America equates French with being classy. Yeah. So. If you unlock the incredibly convoluted subplots, you can actually get him fired. My god, there's a lot of stuff in this game for a Max game, then. Oh, there's tons of stuff in this game. There's a, a part of this subplot is why is Prick... Actually, this answers one of the big questions in the Barn Runner universe. Why is he always so tired? He sleeps on. He sleeps in the car, sometimes while he's driving. He sleeps, you know, in his at his desk at work. There's an entire unlockable subplot about what does he do at night that causes him to never get any sleep. But again, you have to have the naughty bits and the director's cut on and, and follow tons and tons of side quests. But you can unlock his secret nightlife. Go check boat has spoken. Do not defy go check bot. <laughs> Rar. Oh, poop. <laughs> and there you are. I'll just get the cheese, take it to the boss, and get back to my office in time for my afternoon nap. Because they woke him up from a nap. He was in his mid-morning nap when they called him. <laughs> Hello. <Sure. laughs> this robot is probably the most obscure one. This is uh, from a children's book called Emily and the Intergalactic Lemonade Stand. That robot is named Juicer. He juices yeah. lemonades. And they're in the background. Yes, there goes Pimpbot and the Fimbot. Yes. Even though the elevators are supposed to be locked down and no one can leave until Brick concludes the investigation, somehow they found a way to sneak out of the building. Oh dear. I am very nice to her. Not that he wants to know if you stole the cheese. Then who stole it? Is the word of a little girl worth anything in the city <laughs> anymore? I'm afraid not. This little girl, by the way, Melanie, is Kim's hands-down favorite Barn Runner character I've ever created. She wants an entire game just built around this kid. Right. Employee of the month. Hand-drawn in crayon, I'm of sure. Of course. The clocks in the city always read 5.01 p.m. Yep. The consistency is comforting. <laughs> She's grown up in a world where it's only ever been 5.01 p.m. <laughs> it's been the same Friday evening for 11 years, or almost 11 years now. Right. Good morning, sir. Have you seen the missing cheese? How did you get in here? There we go. It's a clue. Indeed. He knows goats to several doors. I'd That's like to the... have, that, have that ability. Can I have his arm? No. But he could program more lock codes into your lock release unit if you find some way to get him on your side. Ahem! Oh, right, of course. I'm sorry, officer, but I cannot help you at this time. I do not dare leave my young friend alone during this uncertain time. The hunger pains. You will get something to eat. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, breakfast was so long ago. I may faint. Right. I sense we need to get her food. Also, there's a bunny. Yes. How you doing, little guy? Mr. Bun says he's sound as a pound. He talks funny, but I love him. 
gold plated data link. I do mind actually. Where did she get a gold plated data link? Well, somebody left it there. There's a list. <coughs> Enemies list. Just like Nixon. <laughs> I love the idea that she's a 10 year old girl keeping an enemy's list. <laughs> Who doesn't? Right. My idea so of trying to get food for the girl might not be the right one you've then. You've got the right idea, but you've got to, you've got to, you can't leave until you clear the robot's identity, and for that you're going to need a working data link. But your data link, the one you have in your inventory, is broken. Uh, now it says that one's broken. Is it supposed oh, to? It should, oh, oh, no, it should not. It should say gold data link. Damnation. There's a bug. You caught that. Ha ha. I blame K. Conan. He was supposed to catch all of these things. <laughs> no, it says it's my old data link. What has happened? Man. I don't know. It didn't say that. There's a bug there somewhere. I'll be damned. It's acting like we've swatched, swapped data links. Yeah, I don't understand. Well, there's a bug somewhere. What you need to do, let's see if we hopefully haven't broken the puzzle, is you give your old data link to the kid and you can swap it out. I don't have my old data link. Right there. No, oh, right. Oh, whoops. No, it's a bug. I'll be damned. Making myself a note on my little marker board here to fix that. Tut, tut, tut. Oh, right. Sorry. Ostentatious. <laughs> He's a simple bunny who likes simple things. That's right. And big words. Just like me. Yes. Let's hope the inventory items have swapped correctly. Let's hope. It Hooray! has! Nothing was broken. Okay, so now you just have to use the, the working data link on the robot, and you can verify his uh, his story, because you can read his, his brain with that. Oh, well, we're not going to hurt him. I need, just need to check his mind log. Or I'll kick you in the shins. What a <laughs> lovely little girl. Yes, indeed. If you're innocent, then who stole the cheese? Now, did you give, did you, have we given the menu to Melanie yet? I've forgotten. No, we have not. All right. It's way too fancy for a humble orphan child like me. There you go. So you can't order something through the maitre d' because that's not the kind of food she likes. So where else can you get food in a restaurant? The bar. Bar food! Yes. We'll get him some of those salted whatever they were. Well, get her something nicer than that. <laughs> salted packing peanuts, actually. That's what those were. I'm not actually sure what salt, what packing peanuts are. Those little foam peanuts that they use to put in packages whenever you order something. A filler, basically. Yes. Oh god, this guy. He's I'm back. I'm slightly afraid, but I'm still going to talk to him. Well, he'll have a completely <clears throat> different demeanor out here because he's in public. Ah, of course, of course. So no sausage parties for us. No. Good. He says he's going to get his money out of your ass one way or another. Ah, <laughs> oh, I see. <clears throat> pa paddled the mayor lately. Which was the mayor's previous political scandal, which is why she's raising money at this fundraiser. Ah. Oh. But apparently from the disc you found and turned in that said girl on girl, apparently there's also some, some looming financial problem running in the background that no one is aware of yet. Yes. So there's another scandal on the horizon. They will but sue. Well, no, because an audited report was submitted under the name of Prick Peckard. So apparently that scandal has been, you know, cut off at the pass before it ever broke. Oh, dear. Yes. <laughs> and now Prick will be the one that faces jail time if the truth ever comes out. I 
About what you said to me in the men's room. <laughs> we have to go there. Oh, do you? <laughs> when you made a pass at me, remember? <laughs> or ask you to meet me in the men's room <laughs> stall of your choice. <laughs> Let's change the subject. I don't care how sexy you are, I won't put up with crap like this. Never mind. <laughs> no mind games. I want to run away from this man now. <laughs> Let's go to the bar. Talk to robust bartender bots. We need something to eat. Salted snack chips, peanuts, pork rinds, and an exquisite assortment of microwave sandwiches, burritos, nachos, and chili dogs. What can I clog your arteries with, buddy? Melanie, I take it. The very one. Everybody knows. Yes, everyone at the restaurant knows about the little girl pretending to be a robot. <laughs> Which, as far as corporate orphan jobs go, that's not a bad job to have. True, true. The world of Barn Runner is filled with corporate orphans, kids that were left in daycare when the clocks all got stuck at 501 and their parents went home without them. And so they're being raised by the corporations and filling whatever niche needs to be filled. The Pack Witch. It's a reprocessed treat that also doubles as a packing material. Mm-hmm. Sounds delicious. I don't have any taste buds, but I know Melanie loves them. No charge. Hooray! Yeah. Yes, hooray. Let's go feed the orphan. Wait, this way. Yeah, that way is faster. My navigation skills suck. Oh, that's fine. It's a looping room, and you know, you can really go any direction you want. True. So feed the kid, and now then you can give your uh, lock release to the robot. Yes. Breakfast and lunch, both in one day. This has been the best day of my entire life. What a <laughs> sad existence. <laughs> well, she is working. She's you know she's working on nights to get her real estate license. So uh. things may pick up for her. If you dig through, like the Monopoly set, all the stuff in her toy box, there's tons of things to interact with. There's actually a lot you can learn about the kid. Okay. She's not content to be just the average corporate orphan. Her dream, her unstated dream is one day to be mayor of the city. And since Kim likes her so much, there's a really good chance that will happen. Oh, dear. Oh, well, then we're going to have an orphan mayor. Well, you know, she can't do any worse than the mayor they have now. <laughs> True. So there you go. Now you can get into the storage closet. Let's see what we find there. Other way. No! God, ah, stop that. Oh, good gracious. Now they're seeing behind the scenes. Dear God. The viewers have seen how the sausage is made. This is why I don't like using Camtasia. That can happen. Yeah. It never happens with fraps or something. Ah, sorry about that, but I use an old version of, uh, version of AGS because I'm old and don't want to learn how to use the new one. Yes, this is all Ponch's fault. Yeah. I prefer 2.72. Hello. There's the robots that stole that stole your badge earlier. In case you were wondering what happened to the badge. Yes, I can't, I, no, I noticed that hanger bot and maid bots. There's also a security monitoring station, a clock, and an intercom. Let's actually take a quick look at this first. Ah, it's used to keep the elevator locked down. Yep. Someone's used a police officer's badge number to temporarily suspend the lockdown a few minutes ago. Yes, prick, someone snuck out. And these robots are shut down. So you might try, try the multi-tool and see if you can repair them. Oh, of course. You could try the same thing to the Fembot in the women's bathroom, but it never seems to work. Didn't work with that one. I wonder why. Oddly. Oh, something fell out. Doesn't need to be prepared, but it doesn't seem to be working either. 
And there's me badge. Come on now, speak up. I'll only shoot <laughs> you a little bit. <laughs> By the way, we need to get our gun back. You do, but the first thing you need to do is you need to use your, um, if you want to get into the other elevator there, you don't have the code for that. But the security monitoring station has all the codes. Of course. Yeah, we were talking over that bit, I think. <laughs> It happens. No! Wrong action. Indeed. Let's try uploading the codes here. There we go. Boopity beepity boop. And now you can get into the elevator and go up to Aurora's office. I'm sure she'll be pleased to see you. Of course she will. Oh, whoops. Do you notice, by the way, the data link turned gold? All the interfaces have turned gold once you picked up the gold data link. No, I didn't. Yeah. Now that you're not using the gray one anymore, the gold one, all the save load, everything's changed. No one noticed that. None of the playtesters noticed it. I was so proud of it, and nobody catches it. <laughs> all that work for it's nothing. One of, it's one of those things. Yes, yeah, all that work for nothing. As seen here in this footage from Action 6 News, has just received from an anonymous source. wonder who could have uploaded that to them. Oh, dear. When did this happen? Why didn't someone tell me? But um, we'll paddle her mercilessly until uh, she cooperates. <laughs> I didn't know TVs this large <laughs> even existed. Ah, oh, priorities, yes, prick priorities. I wish I had a TV that large, by the way. So do I. Not the TV, Tiger. TV off. Oh. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> Should probably do something about that. Hello. <laughs> what an unfortunate shadow. <laughs> Lights. Ah, oh, hello. There you are. And now I can see everything. <laughs> This is how I prefer to sleep. Of course it is, yes. I see. I love a good nap. <laughs> Little naps, big naps, full-figured <laughs> naps. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> Our mutual love of naps. I need to step over here for a minute and think about baseball. <laughs> My God! <laughs> this is another little looping room because this is the penthouse office on top of the uh, top of the uh, restaurant. It's a much smaller little looping room, but oh, here comes C3PO yeah. with something to drink. Indeed. What the hell was that all, all about? That button orders wine. That button does many things. Let's we'll see what else it does. Yeah, of course, click. And now he's, he's bringing a camera. <laughs> Revolution. <laughs> you make movies up here? Certain kinds of movies, yes. Strange, this looks oddly familiar. Does it now? It's as if I'd seen this somewhere before. Actually, now that I see that, I think I've seen this artwork. Yeah. It's a, the style somewhere. That's my best interpretation with a little tiny, you know, that... that picture would have been the size of a postage stamp when I drew it on the sheet of paper. But that's my best version of a tiny, tiny Soriyama painting. And now we have... What was he bringing? can of uh, whipped cream. And there it is. Ah. Uh, you're not even more naked, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I can get more naked than I am. 
a can of whipped cream. <laughs> Lying on a fainting couch, covered by a sheet. Mostly covered, I should say. Oh dear. Use icon. Click use woman. Use woman. <laughs> Oh, hello. That looks like cheese. Indeed it does. I'm not tr I'm not trying to be rude. It's just that this way will make things less hard. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk for a minute? How do you get your sheets <laughs> so wide? <laughs> Those are white sheets, man. Yeah. I wish my office was this nice. You really know how to take a lunch break. I don't like to half-ass things. Must resist. <laughs> Joke! <laughs> I don't like being the butt of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Must <laughs> resist! Second joke! <laughs> I love the dialogue in this oh, game. Oh, thank you. A lot of good jokes. Oh, thank you. That's what I'd like to think Barn Runner offers more than anything else, because God knows my puzzles aren't very good. I'm not saying anything. So far, I've been relying on you to tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still be talking to everyone in the lounge for an hour and a half. Well, that's what my playtesters always tell me, is my puzzles are either way too easy or way too hard. I can never seem to find a, find a way to hit that sweet spot, you know? Uh, it takes practice. Uh, I know. I've been doing this for ten years. You think, <laughs> how much more practice do I need? <laughs> I avoid the problem by never buying white underwear. Yep. I guess it must be a little cold in here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wish my office was this nice. For some reason, this is the only conversation where I'm going through all the options. <laughs> <laughs> my office at the police station is a corner on the janitor's closet where I dragged a desk in, and then I blocked off the area with big boxes. That's true. In yes, story. <laughs> Barn Run Don't 5. Go. I think you finally see his office for the first time, and that's exactly what it is. He built himself a secret office so no one could find him and interrupt his naps. <laughs> a wedge of cheese, I see. It's from the missing wheel of cheese. I'm a naughty girl. I'm not going to read out this line. <laughs> People are going to have nightmares if I start reading out <laughs> her lines. Her words and my voice do not mix. It's an incongruity. <laughs> yes, evidence. That's exactly where I'm taking it. it also help Jackpot! It's worth millions of dollars. Right. Now that you mentioned it, I noticed the gold. But I did. I wouldn't have noticed the it save before. load. The, all the GUIs have changed to gold. Except, yeah, all of them have. Uh, you should have added this sort of shine effect to it. Ah, uh, you know, it's a little 320 by 200 GUI. True. And it was True. one of the very last things that went in the game. Like I think two days before I bundled it up to send it to Dave Gilbert. Chilled champagne. Mm -hmm. As much as I'd like to help myself to some of her extensive collection of music, I can't do it with her standing, uh, lounging right over there. Like all good adventure heroes, he is a kleptomaniac, but he has to know when to steal and when not to. Yes. Right. I'm not sure there's much more I can... The most majestic TV in the world is the hotspot's you, name. You can watch more TV if you like. Oh, God. Yes, indeed. <laughs> the Wedding of Ocean Spirit Dennis. I have never played an Ocean Spirit Dennis game. I have... I'm resisting them. I've made several of them. And this, as far as I, I know, is the first in-game appearance of Ocean Spirit Kurt, Ocean Spirit Dennis's twin brother. Oh, dear. I'm avoiding Ocean Spirit Dennis for what it stands for. You can both marry me. What? Oh, oh, look, another special report. Oh dear. 
why what what is it that ocean spirit dentist represents by the way what is it you have what is your problem with osd i just like some of the japanese rpg stuff that basically it's too overtly I don't. I don't know. I can't explain it. I just don't like it. I don't like the JRPG stuff either, which is why I love Ocean Spirit Tennis. <laughs> oh well. I should probably play an Ocean Spirit Tennis game one someday. Actually, I did. I was it you who made that? Uh, where you had the boat fo boat combat? Yeah, pirates ship on the poop ship. deck. Yeah, pirates on the poop deck. Yes, I played it for like five minutes. Oh. <laughs> it was a turn-based combat game made in ATS. I thought that was pretty clever. It was, but I didn't get into the gameplay mechanics. It seemed too simple for me, so I didn't play it for longer than that. I had a lot more games to play. Yeah, it's a simple game. All my games are simple. Do those two robots on the screen look familiar? Yes, they do. <laughs> All part of the larger conspiracy. Which, by the way, when the, when this program shuts... The longer she refuses to comply, the more of her clothes the robots will remove. Yes. And the paddling only seems to be <laughs> fierce and fierce. <laughs> if you're going to divert a scandal, you have to know how to do it. And that's why Mayor DeCamp keeps getting re-elected. <laughs> nothing gets re Nothing removes the scandal from the headlines like a fresh, sexy scandal. <laughs> Nothing to add. Yep. With the TV, if you turn the TV off and on, I think there's like three more programs you can watch on and off. Let's try one more at least. No, there, there's more Ocean Spirit Dust. That's Life Partner Ray versus the Pirates. I think Life Partner Ray was invented by DDQ, I think. I lost track of who's invented what for Ocean Spirit Dennis. <laughs> and that's not... And Naughty Beard and Ocean Spirit Dennis. They continue to sword fight throughout the rest of the program as you keep going back. That's the fancy man. That was my contribution to the Ocean Spirit Dennis universe was his boat. And now the, sword, the sun has gone down and they're still sword fighting. <laughs> Very classic. Yes. There was a fishing simulator, wasn't there? Yes, I made that one. That's actually from one of my... That's a screenshot from one of my games. And he makes fun of it because, you know, the animators uh, make shows like that to save on the animation budget. I made that game because I didn't feel like animating a damn thing. I just wanted to see if I could build a fishing simulator. <laughs> With 150 things you can fish out of the ocean, I'm, I'm pleased to say. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot of work. That's back when I could actually make a mags game. Oh, do you want to leave yet? I could actually make a mags game and finish a mags game. You need that can of whipped cream. Ah. Uh. I was being too hasty. Indeed. An hour and 40 minutes oh. in, you're being too hasty. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> hasty about a barn runner game, I'm afraid. I thought you might like it to share some dessert with me. What are we having? <clears throat> <laughs> I saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> are you a little shy? Oh, dear. <laughs> Lights. Wow, it gets dark early this time of year. <laughs> I thought I had a few more hours of daylight left. I find a sense of humor helps me cope with sudden anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> and there's your gun. Oh dear. When she was in the office, the elevator uh, coat check room earlier, when you went in just as the door was closing, she went down there to get your gun from the lost and found box. Where have you been hiding that thing this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> Women must have secrets. You can't have too many secrets when you're there like that. Nope. Can I please have my gun back? The quick aside, although it's never revealed in the game, she goes down to the coat check room to take the gun so that you can't find it and then shoot the robot with it. Because she knows, uh. knows the little girl's best friend is that robot, and even though she's evil and manipulating you, she still doesn't want to cause the little girl any distress. So she she, okay. she maneuvers things so you can't kill the robot and end the game early. Questions are question options are: Are you trying to seduce me? Can I have my gun back? Could you bring the lights back up? I'm gonna <laughs> go. We're of course gonna go with the gun. Of course she's not trying to seduce. That's quite a silly thing to say. Don't be silly. <laughs> this gun, the one in my hand. I'd... <laughs> <laughs>
more innuendo. It's shocking, really. It's shameless. That's what it is. Yes. And now she's going to need some sort of proof that you're actually a cop, and that's why I had to use the multi-tool on the gray robot so you wouldn't go, where the hell's the badge? Because that's what happened. I think it was it hands-free or K-Cone, and someone got stuck and could not find that damn badge because they'd used the multi-tool on one of the two robots and apparently forgot they didn't use it on the other one. Uh, and I, I can't help but get the feeling that she's trying to seduce me. Possibly. Is it? <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> Sorry, I guess I assume too much. There should have been two O's in the two. Oh, was it? Whoops. Damn it! Typo! Again, I blame K. Conan. Ah, uh, yes. He is fantastic at catching typos, by the way, because my games are always riddled with them. Same here. Yeah. That's why I, I try to round up as many playtesters as possible. Of all the typo reports of the three playtesters I had, he had just like a page and a half of typos. It was amazing how many of them he caught. So I recommend that to all AGSers. I recommend K. Conan Services, whether he wants you to or not. <laughs> He's fantastic at catching typos. Oh dear. Proto, Let's by the way, Proto is really good at breaking puzzles. That's her gift as a playtester. She can figure out that every if, if a puzzle can be broken, she can find it. Which is why right. I'm shocked she missed that thing about the gold data link in the room. She's always really good about catching that kind of stuff. I'm a police officer. I'm going to need that gun back. Thank you, miss. If you're, if you're not going to be up there for the reason she wants you up there, you're going to have to turn that in. Which, obviously, you know, since she knew about it, it means she must know someone left it for you. Left it for Yes. I, it's almost as though there's some sort of great conspiracy, or a greater conspiracy. <laughs> it's kind of like a conspiracy within a, conspir within a conspiracy. As I said, it's very Kurosawa. Only not, not nearly as well done. And but with more more big girls with big you know big butts. Yes. His movies don't have nearly enough of those. Which is a thing. Yeah. Big big girls with big butts make everything better. <laughs> I've never. I don't. Girl. I don't have time to watch TV. Oh. Yeah, that's actually too bad. We should have saved one of those because there's a really nice lighting effect when <laughs> when you when you turn the TV on in the dark room. Oh. 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 Okay. Now, remember, the bartender bot wouldn't let you into the kitchen because the badge wasn't sufficient because he thought it was a fake ID. And because the badge indicates you can, you're allowed to carry lethal weaponry, only a cop would have that gun that he's carrying. So I'll let you shoot him. No, you do not. <laughs> not shoot the bartender. <laughs> what, 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 was my logic somehow faulty? There you go. <laughs> and there you are. You're almost to the end now. Oh dear. Yeah. So close. And in that case, let's go visit the girls' bathroom once more. Okay. Or the men's room. Nothing new here. I could probably just run around talking to people and do doing stuff in this game. Aha. Uh -huh. What? What is this? Green rubber gloves, I see. That Stu was wearing earlier, but they weren't in there when you were talking to Gary Minch. If you work the if you work the timeline backwards at some point when that men's room's close sign was up, obviously Gary and Stu were in there together. Probably best not to think about it. Uh -huh. Hey, Stu's got to pay the rent, man. He's got new gloves. Yeah, and he's wearing yellow gloves. The music stopped. Yep. She's got a hell of a nice backside to the man. Let's take a quick look around. Dishcloths, cabinet. Lots of stuff for washing dishes. Hooray! It's unnervingly quiet. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Without it is. playing. I got so used to the music playing all the time. Yeah. Dual Names did a really good job with the music. I have to hand it to him. It loops nicely and it doesn't get on your nerves. Yeah. He did a really good job with that. It, it makes you feel like you're in a fancy restaurant. Yeah. And plus, the tune he wrote for the upstairs track for Aurora's Office was just that slightly seductive, but yet still sort of light jazz sound. He did a great job yeah. with it. I got to hand it to him. Good job, James. 
Very good. Uh, the robot. Where's this robot from? That is the B5 robot from the old American black and white TV series Lost in Space. And now we know. And, now, and knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. God, I loved that show as a kid. I have never seen an episode. They, they'd never showed that in Finland, as far as I know. Too violent or something? I think too American. Ah, oh, there's no. We have more European shows. We have like old German TV shows oh. when I was a kid. Oh, okay. But anyway, so the robot's having memory problems. It seems, have, oh. I think we had a memory module, RAM module. Uh, yes, you found one tucked inside the really large bra. Odd how that would have yes. gotten there. Perhaps the owner of the bra removed it. Possibly. Yes, you have to click the use key. It doesn't just pick it up. Yeah. It's a clunky GUI. It's old. You get used to it. You get used to yeah, it. Yeah, I need to redesign it. I've, I've been using that GUI for about six years now. I probably need to upgrade it. It's a new memory being full. Indeed. I love the little talking animation. Oh, thank he has. you. Despite being simple, it's smooth. It's nice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a bit tragic that my first new memory is of that terrible th shirt you're wearing. Prick wears a different horrible t-shirt in every game. One of my, uh, my favorite things to do is to keep coming up with new shirts for him to wear. <laughs> I've got an old copy of Corel Photo Paint 5 that just seems to be perfect for creating terrible textures. <laughs> Talk to me, robots. Who attacked you? No, sir, I do not. Oh, dear. We well, can't remember anything that no. happened before. Well, as a chef bot, maybe he might have some interest in some of the stuff you're carrying, if anything is chef-related. Like cheese. Or... I hope you enjoyed the fundraiser. What else? Whipped cream. Grip whip desert top dessert topping. This stuff is so thick and delicious, it can also be used as an industrial adhesive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Oh yes. I have cans and cans of that stuff in one of my cabinets. Does he? Just a bunch of kitchen utensils. A bunch of empty cans of dessert topping. Empty cans? How odd. Who on earth used all my dessert topping? Who could have been back there doing it? Not Stu. He's certainly too lazy to do anything. Hmm. And the robot wouldn't have remembered it because you could do anything in front of him and he won't remember you doing it. So he needs some whip. If he's going to finish that dessert, he's going to need more dessert topping. It's the only way he can salvage this fundraiser. Well, fortunately, we have some from the questionable events <laughs> happening upstairs. Nothing actually happened, though. That's the sad thing. Yes, it is sad. There was potential for bar barn runner porn. It, oh, we lost it. Well, in the deluxe version, perhaps things will change. I need to keep an eye on the deluxe version. Indeed. 365 days, you say? <laughs> 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 yeah, it'll be, uh, what, March 1st of next year. Making a note on the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'd just like to carry around lots of new and interesting things. <laughs> well, sounds like a fair trade. Hooray! Yes. So now we have Squeaky Clean. Hates all other firms and attacks it on sight. Ah, hmm, that could be a hint. Now we need to find something with a foam. With foam. 
Also, I'm going to visit the ba ladies' bathroom Always. every chance I get. There was foam in the kitchen. Did you miss it? Foam. Oh, right. I missed your... I was expecting something... I always, always expect in a puzzle that two parts of a puzzle can never be too close to one another. If you get an item related to a puzzle, the, the solution has to be somewhere True. far, far away. It's the adventure game. Sometimes that's fun to stand on its head, though, because then people will go looking for foam in other rooms. <laughs> now I need to find a, figure out a way to distract him. I know a way to distract him. <laughs> Use gun. <laughs> oh, well, dear. Why can't well, I do that? he's looking at something. And it's so silent in this room. He's looking... Yes, we need to find him a cassette for music. He mentioned who took Aurora the took it, away. but you wasn't. can't get back upstairs to her. Because you no longer have the lock release. So you're going to have to find somebody else that would have access to music in this place. Other way. To the band! Yeah. You have to learn the geography of this place sooner or later. <laughs> that would have been a long way to go just to loop around that. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't happen to have any tapes. Uh, yes, we are. Yes, of course. Now we need to get her a drink. It's a puzzle within a puzzle Indeed. within a puzzle. First you get to get the foam remover. Once you have that, you need to remove the foam. You can't remove the foam because there's a dude next, exactly. to, next to it. The dude needs music. He needs to find music. You can't get the music unless you get the yep. booze. I wonder what I have to do to get booze. It should be fairly easy. First idea, to the bartender. I want to get a drink. Did she give Any me a drink? Any drink will do. You just get to pick one. I'm wondering which one gives me the funniest one. I think they're all pretty good. You know, just for for a bunch of drink. And the hardest thing, one of the hardest things here was actually to make up the names of these drinks. I would come up with the drink name and then I would Google it, and it turned out it existed. So over and over and over, <laughs> I, I found myself just trying to reach for names. You know, Eskimo Virgin. Too hot out there for you. Here you go, buddy. Iced liquor and frozen cherry and frosted glass. There you go. Will do. This time I yes. remembered which way to go. <laughs> In hindsight, I, I probably should have proving... placed the band a little closer to the door so people could see that, you know? People who have a sense of directionality <laughs> would have figured this out anyway. I just well, don't if you were playing that. it without me telling you where to go and stuff, you would have talked to everybody about everything by now. You'd probably have a pretty good idea of where everyone was at this point in the game, you know? Yeah. So now you've got a cassette tape. Now we have the demo. Because it's the 80s. Of course. Ta da! The kitchen. It's unnervingly yep. quiet again. Let's make the Dropper quiet the go tape. away. Yep. What's this music from? Is was it made? No, it's actually game? a piece of public domain music. I forgot the the creator's name off the top of my head. It's called Funeral Rock for Websites. He wrote it the first time the United States government tried to censor the internet before SOPA and people way back when in like the early nineties. And he wrote this piece of music for that, and I've always liked it. Right. Sorry about that. My government keeps trying to censor the internet. Sorry, the world. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> There is still some yeah. gunk, it says. Well, faucet. Nope, gotta open the drain first. Otherwise you'll flood the kitchen to his attention. Ah. And it's stuck. You're gonna need some, some way to open that. Well, we have a tool. Now, there you go. The music just went rock and roll yep. mode.
The cheese was wrapped in plastic at the there bottom you go. of the sink. Now Success. you have the cheese. There it is. Missing it. Can we combine No, the but if of you cheese? want to be a super nice guy, you can give that little slice of cheese to the girl in the coat check room. That way she can afford to get her real estate license. Good point. Let's and then when you're that. done, you give the big wheel of cheese to the woman in the black dress over there. That's your boss. And then she's yes. going to ask you, who do you think stole the cheese? And I need yes, to you do. It. Oh, dear. And also be sure to stick around. Don't hit escape or anything once the end credits start rolling. Because at the end, it's all explained. I see. Is this one of the games where once the credits have ended, the game automatically shuts it does, yeah. down? It does, yeah. It will do that. Okay. We shall have to end this video before that, because I've had two or three games already in which the game ends abruptly, and then we have to restart it to say, say goodbye oh, not a to the viewers. And, and dear viewers, yeah, we don't want to do problem. that. I said the credits are about a minute and a half long, and then there's a short cutscene that follows, and then there's the Tacky World logo, so there's plenty of time. Right. Hey, kid, want a priceless snack? Moment on the lips is a yep. lifetime on the hips. <laughs> Never too young for an eating disorder, I guess. Night school, yep. here I come. And now she's off to get her real estate license. Even the robot thinks it's very difficult to say no That's to a true. crying child. It is. It is. I said, I just I plan for that character to be a one-off, but Kim really likes her, so I'm, she'll probably make an appearance in another, at least a cameo in another Barn Runner game one day. We have to do a time skip at one point, where Prick is frozen and wakes <laughs> up 20 years in the future, and then, then she's the. I, I don't see any reason why this city couldn't have an 11-year-old girl as the mayor. Oh well. Good point. Like you said earlier, we nope. can't do any worse. Found the cheese. Elementary, my dear chief. The culprit could only be one person. There you go. Dun dun dun. I'm trying to think of all the things I've heard. I didn't talk no, enough no, to No, no, you don't have all the clues to put it together. Because we skip a lot of important conversations. No, yes, I'm trying to think who it might be. Um... The mayor's been up to a lot of shady stuff, so my mind would firstly go to her. But then again, so I feel that might be too obvious. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Dear viewers, you're going to probably watch ten minutes of me going, hmm. Listen, hmm. If you read all the dialogue options, you can come up with a really good reason that it could be three or four different people could be behind it. But everybody tells you something different. So it's hard. You, know, you, you never get the complete story. Oh well, I'm going to go with Pimpbot. No, not. Yes, I am. No, <laughs> no, yes, no. Damn it! I think I'm just going to try to go for, for some laughs now. Turns out the Coat Chick Bot did it. No. Did I, did, did I click on Coat Chick Bot? I didn't mean to. So who, were you, who did you mean to click oh, on? Well. I tried to oh, click whoops. on Noriko. Well, she's standing oh, right behind you. That probably wouldn't have gone over. <laughs> That's oh. why I was trying to click on her for the laughs, because <laughs> I I I cannot know for sure, so I'm not even gonna try that hard. Oh well, them's the breaks, I suppose. The mayor is still missing. That's true. We never solved that case. Not that it could be oh, solved. The mayor, the mayor disappeared oh. around the same time Pimpbot and the Fimbot disappeared, so we'll never... <laughs> I have a good idea where, where the mayor went, though. I'm pretty sure I know which way, uh, at what time, even, she went. And with who. 
I'll see you ladies around, and the music goes to smooth. Yes, this track yeah. is by Simon Loveridge, uh, one of Mark Lovegrove's friends. There wasn't enough time to get one person to do all the music I needed, so I had to farm it out to like three different people. <laughs> Normally in Barn Runner games, I just use rip tracks I get off of gaming sites and that sort of thing. But since this was going to, people were going to be paying for this, I had to make sure everything was actual free to use, you know? Yeah. Thank you for not shooting <laughs> bus spots. Good luck in real estate. And back into the elevator. And there's the robot from Empire Strikes Back. And there is the absolutely yes. goddamn shit. Actually, one of his more subdued ones. <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> Damn, the chief looked good in that dress. <laughs> and credits. Credit roll, Indeed. ladies and gentlemen. Credit roll. I already have to say thank you for making this game. This was absolutely a lot of fun. I'm going to be playing this again, probably with the director's And the naughty on. bits. Make sure you have both at the same time. And yes, Maybe it'll lead you to the other Barn Runner games. There's like a dozen of them at this point. I might. Maybe I will actually, before playing this game again, maybe I will play... I'll try digging up all the old Barn Runner games at some point and maybe start uh, They're all those. at uh, barnrunner.com. They're all on the games page there. I want to say... What's that? You've actually... You've actually reserved a domain name. Oh yeah, I've had a Barn Runner site for a long time. I got tired of yeah, I got tired awesome. of using like you know media uh, media fire and mega upload and that kind of stuff. So I bought my own domain name, and here we are. The cheese was never really missing. Aurora headed in the sink. I was originally going to yeah. say Aurora. Well, they're all involved. Those two plus two other people were involved. You'll see all four culprits in a moment. And the bunny of course he does. That's Mr. Buttons. That's her yes man. She doesn't go anywhere without her yes man. Of course. Lots and lots of cans of whipped, whipped right. topping, of While course. Stu was in hiding from her in the bathroom with Gary, unfortunately for Stu, that's where he wound up. Aurora snuck back here, You grabbed the cheese out of the cabinet, put it in the sink, covered it with all the whipped cream the chef bot had, who wasn't going to remember her stealing it, and then went back outside to get Prick's gun from the coat check room before Prick found it. Meanwhile, Mayor DeCamp was in the bathroom changing into the shell that C-3PO rolled in after Aurora ordered it on the data terminal. And then she and Pimpbot snuck out together, and that's the Chief with the pizza box and Noriko with the breadsticks and the white plastic bag. And all four of them together worked to steal the cheese. Not, uh, yeah, that I didn't not because see. they cared to steal the cheese, because it was insured and it wasn't really going anywhere, but all to manufacture a scandal by filming that video upstairs in Aurora's office to distract people from the real scandal that was about to break. And that's why if you talk to the Major D, Gary, or, uh, yeah, the guy, uh, the news reporter, was that if the other empty table belonged to the news reporter, but he didn't show because he was told right before he was supposed to show up that a big story was about to break, and he ran back. And that's the end of the game. And the game will end. Bye. Awesome. Did you get all of it? I'm not I'm pretty sure the recording just think, ended, but I'm not sure. Actually, I think, I think it's still recording. I think you got the awesome part. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm pretty sure. Actually, it is still recording, so we can still say goodbye to the dear viewers. You're right now. You might be seeing a piece of my desktop, but in fact, you're not because I'm gonna hide it with the or credit you can sequence. Leave, you can put a black screen there. They can't see anything anyway. That art's by by Ghost, by the way. Hi, Ghost, and thank you, Ghost and Ben three hundred four for being such great moral support during the dark days of the AGS bake sale when everything threatened to come off the rails. When uh, when CJ said yes. he didn't want our server, man, the the whole thing almost came apart right there. But that was the unraveling moment for a yeah. second. But fortunately, the big sale Yeah, it's came been through. a big success. We've raised over $4,000, which is way more than I ever expected to raise. I was hoping we'd raise 300 so we could buy a new server. It never occurred to me we'd raise $4,000. Oh, well, the Internet's a Indeed. wonderful place. It, it is a place where an old down, down, down on his luck adventure game developer can raise $2 million in that is, days. Yeah, that's pretty staggering, actually. I didn't expect him to raise that much either. Hope we live it is. It's amazing. Times. Oh well, I hope I'm gonna start my own fundraiser <laughs> soon, so I can make millions too without actually having done. Well, you could have been yet. a part of the bake sale, but you. I could have, I could have, but I 
basically, I was working on Heat Watches, so I had oh. too much to do, and I was trying to work on basically three games at once. That's it why my last three out. Mags games never came to fruition. By the time I got the bake sale done, I'm I'm doing all the I'm answering all the emails and doing the interviews and everything. So every night I come home to a big inbox of emails and stuff. People having problems with downloading their games or people wanting free copies of the games for charity, you know, for raffles and that kind of crap. So I, I haven't worked. I haven't not made an adventure game since what last year <laughs> from when I finished this one we just played. Oh dear. Oh well. Keep making adventure games. This one was a lot of fun to play, and I will be playing it again. And. uh Thank you for doing the commentary. Yeah, thank it was you. a lot of fun. We made about two hours of video. I hope people will have had fun <laughs> watching us and listening to us rambling, mostly about uh, boobs and ass yes. and boobs and ass and sometimes puzzling and adventure games. But uh, there was occasional mentions of Kurosawa, so it had some class. There yes, of course, and and some mythical Japanese <laughs> cartoons and, and drawings. Yes. We had a lot of and art. Ocean Spirit, Dennis. Uh, yes, Ocean Spirit Dennis. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching, and thank you, Ponch, uh, for being here. Bye-bye.